Today, we'll be talking about bacteria, viruses, and fungi. This lesson was created by Mariah Thrush as part of Ohio University's NSF-funded Boat of Knowledge in the Science Classroom. First, let's think about what organisms and objects can make humans sick. Pause the video and make a list with your classmates. You probably listed items such as these and maybe others. It's important to remember here that it's not people or dirt that are directly causing sickness, but the bacteria, viruses, and fungi in the objects or the infecting the organisms themselves that cause the sickness. Creating a chart such as this for guided notes will be useful. There will be only five to seven words per box. Make your own in a notebook First up, bacteria. Bacteria are made up of living cells, either in single cells or in grouped in colonies, as you see in this Petri dish. Cells are microscopic in size. They typically range in size from 0.5 to 5 micrometers. Check out this website for an interactive comparison of sizes. Bacteria come in different shapes. There's a large number of shapes but the three most common shapes are bacilli, which are rod-shaped, cocci, which are round, and spirilla, which are spiral-shaped. Bacteria don't necessarily need a host, but just optimal conditions. Different species of bacteria thrive at different temperatures, different pHs, and with different amounts of water and nutrients. For feeding type, bacteria are parasitic like when they infect and live in an organism, and also saprophytic, when they grow on dead or decaying organisms or inanimate objects like dirt or in water. There's plenty of examples of bacteria that infect humans and other organisms, causing diseases such as tuberculosis, gangrene, strep infections, especially of the throat, whooping cough, botulism, Lyme disease, cholera, and bubonic plague. There are a few options to treat bacterial infections, depending on the specific infection. There are vaccines for meningitis, and you probably received your DPT, that is, diphtheria, pertussis, and tetanus vaccine, when you were younger. When vaccinations aren't available, there's a wide array of antibiotics that can be used. Viruses are next. Until recently, viruses were considered non-living but studies in 2015 asserted that viruses should be considered living. This has been a controversial subject for decades and will likely continue to be contested on both sides of the argument. Viruses are much smaller than bacteria. Viruses can't be seen in a regular microscope, but can be seen in a scanning electron microscope. Go back to the website you viewed for bacteria to see size comparisons of viruses. Viruses come in all sorts of shapes. Some are simple, such as the ORF virus and rhabdovirus, or some are complex, such as the T11 colophage. Viruses are parasitic, meaning that they rely on living cells to survive. Some viruses can go into a hibernation-like state when not in a living cell, but they can't reproduce outside of a living cell. Viral infections are fairly common, We've all had the common cold at least once. Other viral infections include influenza strains, West Nile infections from mosquito bites, measles, mumps, rubella, dengue fever, yellow fever, rabies, smallpox, and Ebola. The only treatment for viral infections is vaccines. While vaccines for viral infections aren't rare, they're not available for all viruses. For example, there is no vaccine for dengue fever or rabies in late stages. Last, we'll cover fungi. Fungi are made up of living cells, either in single cells or grouped in colonies, as you can see in this microscope close up. The cells can be singular like yeast, or they can make up multicellular filaments that combine to make up strands or dots of mold. 
There's also whole mushrooms, which are large collections of fungal cells. Single fungal cells can be seen with the aid of a microscope, but filaments can be visible to the naked eye if enough cells combine to make it thicker. Like bacteria, fungi don't necessarily need a host, but just optimal conditions. Different species thrive at different temperatures, different pH, and with different amounts of water and nutrients, though all prefer wetter conditions. You might have had athlete's foot before, which is a fungal infection caused by your feet being damp from sweat for too long. Fungi are parasitic, such as when they infect and live in an organism, such as this ringworm infection, and they're saprophytic, such as when they grow on dead or decaying organisms like this log. The most common fungal infections are athlete's foot, yeast infections, and ringworm. Antifungal treatments can be a topical cream or an oral medication depending on the type and severity of the infection. Double check your chart to make sure all boxes are filled out correctly. Now on to an activity. We'll be using zombies to talk about infection rates in a population. What characteristics describe a zombie and where did you see or hear about these characteristics? Pause the video and create a list of characteristics. Traditionally, zombies are slow, shambling, generally dumb, and hungry for brains. Infection occurs if bitten by a zombie. Newer media has many variations. Some have superhuman speed, animal-like instincts, different nature of infection, and so on. Remember that zombies are infected by some sort of pathogen, virus, bacteria, or fungi, causing their condition. Pair up with a classmate and use a computer to complete the activity to see how infection rates increase in a population. Search for Texas Instruments, Stem Behind Hollywood, Zombie Apocalypse on the internet. When you find the page, be sure to click on the Zombie Apocalypse 1 located on the left side of the page for this activity. You can find the specific lesson plan materials, including a worksheet for this activity, at the web address at the bottom. Thank you for watching.